Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. I wanted to come at you with 2 Samuel chapter 3 today. Bit of a bad story here. Joab, who eventually became King David's general for all intents and purposes, I forget if he had a specific title, but essentially the general, the leader of all of his armies. Joab did something really, really bad. Um, to give a little backstory, you go back into 2 Samuel chapter 2. And Abner, the, who headed up Ishbosheth's army, now Ishbosheth, he was the king of Israel at the time. Um, all 11 tribes minus Judah, David was the king over just the tribe of Judah. And he was that king for, what was it, seven and a half years? Somewhere around about there. And it's kind of annoying me. I want to know how many years it was. Seven years, six months, seven and a half years. Yay me. Remember correctly, that's 2 Samuel 2.11, right before the story. So Abner, basically, Abner gets his, has his soldiers with him. Joab has his soldiers with him. They say, let their guys compete. That goes back to my previous message about the dumbest idea of ever, about 12 guys on one side, 12 guys on the other. They grab each other by the head and shove a sword through each other. That's what it reads. That's what it sounds like as I read it. And that's the dumbest idea ever. If you're going to try to kill your enemy, try to kill him. And there was more bloodshed throughout that day. David's men ended up killing many more of uh, Ishbosheth's men than Ishbosheth's men killed David's. So and eventually Abner had to back off. But Abner did strike down Asahel, who was the brother of Joab. So there was an official battle there. Um, many people died, including Job's brother. Then in chapter 3, we see that Ishbosheth accuses Abner in, in verse 7 about going into one of his father's concubines. And Abner says, Are you seriously accusing me of wrongdoing with this woman now? Based on the wording of the verses, he may have been guilty. He may have been basically strengthening his hold over the kingdom with Ishbosheth as the head, and he was basically just kind of exalting himself. It's possible with what I read. It doesn't have to be that way, but it could be possible. And it's not. There's no real evidence one way or the other that he did or did not sleep with that concubine. It's just possible that he was trying to get more of a foothold on the kingdom. And if that's the case, it's possible that he slept with the concubine. So I'm just like, you're accusing me of doing something wrong with that concubine. I'm just going to convince everyone to turn away from you and turn to David now. And so he does exactly that. And as Abner's doing that, Joab goes and while... So Abner's talking to all the leaders. Talk, David invites him over for a banquet. Sends him on his way in peace. And Joab, calls without telling David about it, calls him to the side. And him and Abishai... That's Joab and Abishai were both their brothers, and that's how was their brothers. Well, they so they bring aside Abner and kill him. That's verse thirty. And so in verse thirty-one, I'll, at this point I'll read that David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, "Tear your clothes, gird yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn for Abner." And King David followed the coffin. So they buried Abner in Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king sang a lament over Abner and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into fetters. As a man falls before wicked men, so you fell. Hop down to verse 38. That the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? And I am weak today, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zariah, are too harsh for me. The Lord shall repay the evildoer according to his wickedness. And my entire point to all this backstory and to that ending there is since Joab did, since Joab killed a man in peacetime, Asahel was killed when Joab and his brothers and the men under him and Abner and the men under him were actively engaged in combat. It was open war. And at that time Asahel fell. Whereas Joab and Abishai felled Abner when he was on when he basically betrayed his master Ishbosheth and came over to David's side. Now, I remember reading one time years ago on some atheist blog that apparently David didn't execute the law on Joab and kill him for taking an innocent life because Joab was too strong a warrior. He didn't need him too much. So so much for following God's plan. 
And I wanted to respond to that and say, you do realize you're talking about the man who wouldn't kill the king, Saul, who was trying to take his life. David was an exceedingly merciful man. Yes, he did kill Goliath. Yes, he killed the men who killed Saul. And in chapter, in chapter 4, he also kills the men who kill Ishbosheth and bring his head to David. So David did have a strong sense of justice about him. And he wasn't afraid to take human life, but at the same time, he was merciful. He didn't just kill anybody and everybody. So isn't it incredibly possible that David was showing mercy to Job, at least at this time? David was showing mercy to Joab for what he did. It wasn't necessarily selfishly inspired. Again, we're talking about the man who allowed Saul, the guy who was trying to kill him, continue to reign, and he continued to live out in the wilderness and in a bunch of random strongholds, and even moved out of his home country of Israel and moved into the land of the Philistines for a time, so he would not have to kill Saul. It's not unreasonable to think that this man would be merciful to a fellow Israelite, especially a soldier who was loyal to him, as he had been merciful to a king who had been trying to kill him. So... You can, I mean, the, I can see where that atheist was coming from, but to simply charge David with so much wrongdoing, especially in the middle of all of the political turmoil that was going on at the time, I think David showed himself exceedingly merciful many times over. And I think Job was one more example of mercy. So there's the Christian side of that argument. All of that simply to kind of put a rebuttal to an article I don't even remember and can't even source. It's just I had a chance after all these years to say something about it. So here I am. I have a YouTube channel and I'm saying something about it. So that made me happy. And that's it for this video. And I know I went over a little bit. Thank you guys very much for those of you who did watch the entire thing. And even if you just fast forwarded to the end, for everyone who watched it and even everyone who didn't watch it, still love you and God bless.